What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A34 5G tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now the first thing I want to do is show you how to hide apps with the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. And what I mean by this is that if there's a certain app in the app drawer or even an app on your home screen and you don't want it to be anywhere on the device itself, then I can show you how to hide it. So what you're going to do is go to the app drawer itself. So you swipe up here and then go to the three dots in the upper right corner. Then from there, go to settings. Then from there, go down and you'll see hide apps on home and app screens. So go there. And then now you'll see a list of all the various apps on the phone. So what I'm going to do is hide Facebook in this demonstration. So I'm going to tap on that app. And now you can see it's up here in the hidden apps. Then I'm going to go to done. And then now when I go to the home screen, you'll see Facebook is no longer there. And then also when I'm in the app drawer, Facebook is also nowhere to be found. So the app is now hidden. Now to bring the app back, you go to the same area, go to the settings once again, go back to hide apps and then remove it, go to done, and then it won't put the app back on the home screen, but you will see it once again in the app drawer itself. Then from there, you can grab the app and put it back to where it was if it was on your home screen in the first place. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G, we have a very large display at 6.6 .6 inches. Now the big display here is great in many ways, and it's awesome especially if you want to watch video content and everything's just a lot larger here. However, it can be difficult, if not impossible, to reach all portions of the display with just one hand. So I can't even reach up here in the corner. Now thankfully, Samsung has thought of a really cool solution to this, and it's called one-handed mode. Now one-handed mode is not enabled by default, so let me show you how to set that up. So to set it up, you're going to pull down the shade here, go to the gear icon, which will take you to the settings. Then from there, go to search, type in one, handed and you'll see right there one-handed mode under advanced features and then go to one-handed mode right here and then now you can enable that now what I recommend doing is actually using the button way to initiate it rather than the gesture I feel like it makes a lot more sense and it's a lot easier overall so go to button and then now if you double tap on the home button it will shrink down the entire operating system so essentially we're getting a mini phone here then from there, you can go home to the home screen, navigate around, do anything you want to do here on the device. But what's different this time is that you can now reach all portions of the operating system. Now, this is actually pretty customizable. You can move it to the left side, for instance. So if you're left-handed, that could be a lot easier for you. Also, if you want to move it up or down, you can do that too. So it's a little bit higher up here. And then in addition to that, you can resize it. So if you want it to be a little bit smaller than the default, you can do that. Or if you want it a little bit larger, you can make that change as well. And then to get out of one-handed mode, all you have to do is just tap outside of the main phone operating system area, and it'll take things back to normal. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. And there's two different methods I wanna show you on how to take a screenshot here with the phone. Now the first method is very simple. All you have to do is hold the volume down and the power button for about a second. And just like that, it takes the screenshot. Then from there, you can crop it or edit it or share it. And then it will be saved to your gallery. And then the second method to take a screenshot is a bit more complicated, but kind of interesting. And it's called palm swipe to capture. Now this is already enabled by default. And essentially all you have to do is swipe your palm across the display. So let's give that a try right now. And there we go. We now took the screenshot using that method. Now you might have noticed that with the Galaxy A34 5G, by default, we get this tiny notch up here in the upper right corner. Now if you slide it out, this pops up, and that's called the Edge Panel. Now the Edge Panel has a lot of different customizations. This is the default configuration. It'll give you some of your recent apps, also some of these other apps here in different configurations as well. For example, if you go to this one, it's actually an app cluster, so that'll actually open up YouTube up top, and then the web browser down below. But you can totally customize this to your liking. 
So the first thing that you can do is go to this pen icon in the bottom right corner. And if you go there, you can see a list of all your various apps and you can remove various apps from the edge panel or add other ones in, which is really interesting. Maybe you want to put Facebook in there, for instance, you can drag that in and then now we can exit out of here and now it'll show up in the edge panel. So that's really convenient. Also, when you swipe over on the edge panel, you'll see these nine dots right there. If you tap on that, it'll give you a list of all the various apps on the phone itself. So you can access any app through the edge panel at any time. Definitely kind of a cool, convenient way to get to those apps. And then in addition to that, when you swipe over, you'll see this little gear icon. And if you go there, it gives you a lot of other types of edge panels. So by default, we get the apps, but also you can do people, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, reminders, clipboard, and there's even more options here in the Galaxy Store. Now there are more modifications you can make to the edge panel itself. So we can go to the main settings for the phone, go to search, type in edge, and you'll see right there edge panels. So go there. And the first thing is, if you don't want edge panels at all, you can actually disable it and it'll no longer be there. But I personally think it's a really useful feature. Then from here, you can also go to handle. And from there, you can customize the appearance of it. You can change the color of the edge panel. You can also change the position. So if you want on the left side instead, you do have that option. You can also move the edge panel up and down, and you can even change the transparency, size, and width. So a lot of different customizations there for the edge panel. Now the next thing I want to do is show you a quick and easy way to get to the camera app on the device. And this is enabled by default. And all you have to do is double press on the power button, and it'll pull up the camera app. Now you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system, so it's really convenient. So this feature is called Side Key, and you can actually customize this to any app of your choosing. So to do that, you're going to pull down the notification shade, go to the gear icon for the settings, go to search, type in side, and you'll see right there side key, go there, and you'll see that by default, it does do quick launch camera, but if you want to, you can have it open any app. So for this demonstration, I'm going to have it open up Instagram. So then now with that enabled, I can just double press on the power button and it will pull up Instagram. So that's really cool. Now there is an additional customization that you can make to the side key. So by default, when you hold down the side key, it will pull up Bixby, which is Samsung's assistant. But if instead you want the power off menu to be pulled up, you can do that here instead. Now, by the way, in case you're curious, by default, if you want to turn the phone off or restart it, you do have to pull down the notification shade twice, and then you go up here. But if you want it to work how phones used to work, where you just hold down the power button, you can go back to the side key settings area, go to power off menu, and then now when you hold down that button, it'll pull up the power off and restart menu. Now with the Galaxy A34 5G, we have a really amazing looking display here. And what's cool about it is that you can actually customize it quite a bit. So let me show you that now. So you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, then from here, go to display, which is right there. And there's a few things I wanna show you. The first one is we have dark mode, so by default, we have light mode, but you can go there to dark mode and it'll make everything a lot darker. So this is definitely useful in a movie theater or maybe at night. So you're welcome to give that a try. You can also go to dark mode settings to set a schedule for it too. We also have motion smoothness. So by default, we do have a 120 Hertz refresh rate with the Galaxy A34 5G. Now that's a nice premium feature to have. I really like that smooth refresh rate. However, it does use up a bit more battery compared to a slower 60 hertz refresh rate. So what you can do is go here under motion smoothness and you'll have the option instead to switch it over to 60 hertz. Now overall, I recommend keeping it at 120 hertz because that's a really nice feature and you may as well use it. And then now with that enabled, everything works as it typically would. You're just not getting those smoother frame rates. But at the same time, you're gonna be getting slightly better battery life. Moving on, we also have iComfort Shield. So this really comes in handy, especially towards the end of the day, as it does limit blue light. But when you enable that, you can see how the display looks a little bit different. Now by default, it's on adaptive, so it'll adjust the screen's colors based on the time of day. You can also customize it too, so you can set a schedule and also change the color temperature manually. So that's a nice customization there. We also have various screen modes. So by default, it is set to vivid. You can also switch it over to natural, but on vivid, you can make the display cooler or warmer, which is nice. And then you can also go to advanced settings and over here, there's a full RGB scale. We also have an option to change the system font and also the font size, and you can bold fonts if you want to as well. 
We also have an option for screen timeout. So by default, I believe that's set to 30 seconds or a minute. I changed the screen timeout time to 10 minutes since I've been making a lot of videos here about the phone, but I definitely recommend trying out different times here. We also have easy mode. So if you're setting this phone up for yourself or someone else and you want a very simple layout, and definitely if you're setting up for someone else who's not very good at tech, you can enable easy mode here to have a very basic operating system layout on the device. Now the next thing I wanna show you is the navigation bar customization settings. So by default with this device, we do get the traditional Android three button navigation. Now I know many people are a fan of this and prefer it, but this phone is also capable of having gesture based navigation. Now if you've never used gesture navigation, I do at least recommend giving it a try because who knows, you might prefer that instead. But in case you're not aware, with the standard three button navigation, the button here on the left is for your recent apps, the middle button takes you home, and then the button on the right here takes you back. However, if you go to the navigation bar settings under the display settings, you can change this. So the first thing you can do is switch around the buttons here on the bottom. So you can have the back button be on the left side and the recent apps on the right side. But then we also have swipe gestures. So if you go there, you'll now lose those three buttons, but in exchange for that, you get this tiny line here at the bottom. So basically with gesture-based navigation, you swipe partially up to go to your recent apps, you swipe from the side to go back, and then you swipe up to go home. Now there are some further customizations, so you can go to more options here, and there's this option called swipe from bottom. Now swipe from bottom is pretty interesting because it's kind of a hybrid of the two, so basically, if you swipe up on the middle line here, it'll take you home. If you swipe up from the line on the left, it'll take you to recent apps. And then swiping up from the line on the right side will take you back. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you some cool things in the motion and gestures menu. So we're gonna to go to the settings once again, go to search, type in motion, and you'll see right there, motions and gestures. Then from there, go there, and you'll see a variety of different options. Now, some of these are already enabled by default, which is great, but some are not. So the first one here is lift to wake. So basically, it'll turn on the screen of the phone when you pick up your phone. So we'll enable that. So now, with the display off, I can pick up the phone here, and it'll turn on the display. Now, we do also have double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen. That's really cool. So you can double tap on an open area on the home screen, and it'll turn off the screen. And then if you double tap on the screen when it's off, it'll also turn it back on. This one's also really cool, keep screen on while viewing. So with that enabled, it'll basically keep the display on anytime that you're looking at it. So it'll use the front camera to figure out if you're actually looking at the display or if you're not. Now, if you find yourself depleting the battery on your Galaxy A34 5G faster than you expected, or if you know that you have a long day ahead of you without access to recharge the phone, then power saving mode might be really useful to you. Now to get to this, you're gonna pull down the notification shade, go to the settings, go to search, Type in power saving, and you'll see it right there. So go there. So basically, if you enable this, it'll cut out a lot of different background tasks, and in return for that, you'll be getting a lot better battery life. Now overall, I don't recommend enabling power saving mode at all times, because the phone won't perform exactly how it's meant to be, but if you do find yourself in a situation where you know you need to make the most of your battery, then power saving mode is at least here for you. And the last thing I want to show you in this video is how to customize your lock screen. So we're going to head over to the lock screen on the device. And basically all you have to do from here is hold down and then either enter in your pin or use your fingerprint there. And then from here, there's a lot of different customizations. Now, some of these are pretty straightforward, like changing the wallpaper, but also you can even change the apps here at the bottom of the lock screen. So by default, you get the phone app and the camera app but instead you can just tap on either of these and you can switch it to any app on the device. So that's really convenient. And especially for some other things like adding the flashlight or a calculator, I can see that being really useful. Or if you want no app, you can do that too. Another modification you can make is to go here under contact information. So basically, if you want your lock screen to show a phone number or your email address in case you lose your phone, you can actually add that in right here. So that's really awesome. I can definitely see how that could be a game changer for someone if they were to misplace their device. And then you can also go to the clock itself right there, and you can either have no clock, or you can change the layout of the clock. So if you want an analog clock instead, you have that option. You can also change the colors of it too. 
So it's nice that you can make that modification as well. So definitely a lot here that you can change for the lock screen. And I really appreciate that Samsung gives us the ability to change things like that to exactly how we want them to be. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.